the devil's number one holiday. It's Halloween. The devil one, the devil's holiday is Halloween. And a lot of believers today, today, you know, they are celebrating Halloween. They are going on and renting costumes, buying costumes, making costumes, uh, painting their doors, putting pumpkins in front of the door. First of all, the pumpkin, the pumpkin, when you take the pumpkin, you, 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 you represent the demon, the demon that controls the rivers, which is the demon called Ochun in Santeria. So the pumpkin brings that demon into your house when you put pumpkins at your door. You see, so, 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 so that demon operate with pumpkins. So when you put pumpkins in your door on Halloween, as believers, you are giving the devil a, a entry. You're giving that principality, the demon that runs the rivers. Her name is Ochun, which is a, Je- a type of Jezebel in the Jehovah religion. You're bringing that demon into your home. You're giving it access to your home, access to your family. And, and, and the most remarkable thing that the devil taught me was I love when they celebrate Halloween. I love when they get dressed. I love when they celebrate my holiday because they come intertwined. You come intertwined with darkness. I don't care if you're reading your Bible 20 times a day. When you turn around and you celebrate Halloween or you open your door to Halloween or you open your life to Halloween or you open your family to Halloween, the devil has you by the throat. The devil has a stronghold on you by the throat. And, and, and one of the things that the, the devil has shown at the time that I was in an enemy's camp, the devil has shown me that the reason he loves Christians to celebrate Halloween, because it brings four, it brings, the Bible says it brings a four to five generation of curse in your family. That's one of the issues that the devil knows, because and then if he knows that you can celebrate Halloween as a believer, he knows that the next generation in your family will celebrate the same thing because it brings the generation of curse, will bring a ripple effect in the spur round would attach yourself to your other family members. And on top of that, he, the devil, one of the things that the devil loves that Christian believers will celebrate Halloween is, 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 and I'm giving this out today because I hope that it, once it's in the archives, people can tune into it because uh, to, uh, Halloween is not, we're not too far off from Halloween. We're not, I mean, uh, July is over. We, we're in August. We're coming up, we're coming up in the month of August. Summer is, is gone pretty much. So, so believers are preparing themselves Halloween party, Halloween gathering. Well, you have churches. You have churches that are doing something that it, that it blows my mind, brother Shannon. You have churches that are that are going out and uh, celebrating. For, instead of Halloween, they're celebrating harvest. Harvest. I mean, God, God said the only harvest we know is the souls of people that are out there that are lost. The, har- the, the, the harvest is planted. The work is a few. I mean, what is this harvest stuff that we have to celebrate to replace Halloween in the churches? So you're bringing your curse to your church when you do that. You're bringing, I mean, you, what, what would you, you, you can give candy and, and stuff to people throughout the year. Do, I mean, you, you want to give candy in your church? Hey, let's celebrate Resurrection Sunday. We give out candy. Let's make it a celebration in the church that Jesus has risen, that Jesus came out the tomb, that we are alive, that we are alive in Christ. Let's celebrate that. Why do you have to wait for, for Halloween, October 31st, to do harvest in your church when you're bringing the curse upon the children in your church? Because the devil... It's, that's like, like 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 a substitute of Halloween. Why do you substitute Halloween with something else? When it's not even in the Bible, the Lord say it's not even in the Bible to celebrate a substitute a holiday from the holiday. So, and another thing is you, you're dressing up your kids. One of the biggest demonic disillusion that the devil brings to to the body of Christ on Halloween is to change costume, put on an outfit, paint your face. I don't care if you put on the Little Mermaid. I don't care if you put on Casper the Friendly Ghost. I don't care if you put on uh, whatever Ninja Turtle. Whatever costume you put on. One of the things that has amazed me the most, that Jesus created Adam and Eve to be perfect. He created them in the garden. Everything was perfect. And when the devil got into the garden and touched them and convinced them and, 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 and confused their mind, that he changed their identity. He changed their identity. And one amazing thing that the devil does to many Christians today when you put on a costume, he changes your identity of who you are in Christ. By putting on a costume that you're not, you open yourself up to the most demonic attack on Halloween ever you can ever imagine. So you're no longer in Christ. Your identity is changed. The devil is the biggest identity theft stealer of mankind. Amen? The devil is the biggest identity death dealer of mankind. There's Christians that are walking around that don't have no identity who they are. 
They don't have no identity who God has called them to be. They don't have no identity who God created them to be. They don't have no identity of who, what their purpose. You stop Christians out there in the street, and you say, what is your purpose and your destiny? I don't know. But they know how to celebrate Halloween. And I guarantee you that if you ask those believers that they want to be honest or transparent, have you ever celebrated Halloween? Yes, I have. And if you're celebrating harvest, you're celebrating Halloween. And that's the danger of, of, of believers today, that instead of us affecting the world, the world is affecting us. Instead of us affecting the world and bringing them to the church, we're bringing the world into the church. And now the church is entertainment. The church is, is an amusement park. The church is the circus. We need to entertain people to keep people. We need to entertain people so they can come back. No, I don't entertain anybody because I bring the cross of Jesus Christ. God will do the rest. And, and Halloween is, is one of the, the – if you, if you see – if you go back to the history of Halloween, and I'm talking about the history years after years, the most demonic attack, the most people missing, the most people missing, people – human sacrifices, uh, skulls, uh, cemeteries, plots upside down, people digging out bones and skeletons and people digging out skulls for Halloween. If you see the situation with Halloween – if you see the situation with, with, with attack with, uh, with uh, uh, the gentleman – the, the, the young boy, the young kid that did the, the, the attack on uh, the movie theater out in Colorado, a demon, a, a, a demon, a, a demon possessed person, celebrated Halloween. If you see the situation with the young man in uh, in the school in Connecticut, celebrated Halloween. You, it's Halloween is like the opposite, and I shouldn't have said the opposite because I'm, I'm kind of I'm just trying to give you a, an, an analogy of how we celebrate Good Friday, how we celebrate Resurrection Sunday. The importance of Good Friday, the importance for believers to celebrate Resurrection Sunday, because without the Resurrection, without Good Friday, there's no Christianity. Without Halloween, there's no devil. You know, and then the day after, the day after Halloween, all, all, Saint, all Saint Day, all Saint Day, people buying candles and buying candles and celebrating and making uh, different food offerings to their dead relatives. Those are demons, people. You, 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 got, you got Christians celebrating All Saint Day, the day after Halloween, which is November 1st. So how are you going to celebrate these things and call yourself blessed? How are you going to celebrate these things and say you're in Christ? How are you going to celebrate? It's like, me get, it's like me being married and I'm sleeping with a prostitute, but I love my wife. Oh, I'm, I'm married. I love my wife, but I'm sleeping with a prostitute. No, there's no way that that makes sense. There's no way that you can, you can fit that in someone's mind. So, so the attack, the demonic attack, the demonic stronghold, the gateways, the portals, the, 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 four, the four to five generations being cursed, it starts celebrating Halloween. Halloween, it, it, people think, is, they look at it, they look, you know, we get caught up with the historical aspect of what Halloween is. But people, that's just a story. The, the, the whole picture of Halloween it's like you honoring the devil. You bow down to the devil because I used to celebrate Halloween. The biggest witchcraft that I used to do was on Halloween to kill, steal, and destroy Christian believers, destroy anything that came in my path that week that, that, that I, I was preparing a week ahead of time. As a matter of fact, I was preparing two weeks ahead of time to kill you on the 31st. Coffins, bones, portions, you name it. I had it. Halloween. It is a nuisance. It is an abomination in the eyes of a holy God. So how is it that you're going to go to a Halloween party? How is it you're going to have a, a, a harvest in your church and call it blessed and call it you, uh, you honoring God when God never called you to do a harvest in your church, when God never called a Christian to put pumpkins and colored things on their door or put, uh, put uh, spider webs, you know, spider webs and entrapments on your windows and, 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 and goblins and all this kind of goblins, uh, uh, demonic forces on, on your windows or, or on your door or, or, or around your house. I mean, that is the thing. If you have done that, it's time to repent tonight. It's time to ask God for forgiveness. It's time to call Mega Man Radio and say, help me close these doors and cut the ties that the enemy has on me, my family, and the next three or four generations in my, in, in, in my family line. Halloween is, is, is poison to the believer and to the non-believer. If, if you look at the stories in this year coming up, i give you an example. Look at the newspaper this year coming up. To non-believers, how many people die and get killed and get stabbed and get shot and, get mi- and they're missing on Halloween? People, if you play with fire, if you play with fire, 
you're going to smell like toast. And not even that you play with fire, you're going to burn your whole house down. And you have nothing left of you. Because the devil comes to play for keeps. The devil plays for keeps. The devil is the mo- he has a mastermind of strategies. Believe me, I sat in the devil's mind for 25 years. I sat in the devil's mind for 25 years. His mind is full of strategies. How to entrap, engage, and kill, steal, and destroy to holidays, to events, to cultures. I was talking to a young lady in my church uh, this past Sunday, Brother Shannon, and she told me as a Muslim, she was a devout Muslim at the time. Thank God she's saved today. A uh, wonderful young lady, a devout Muslim. And she said that she, she described the ceremony that they do in Islam with the, with the uh, ceremonies of bath cleanings and all that. That same ceremony is the same demon that does it in Santeria. But to them, it's a culture thing. Okay, to the Muslim. And, and to the people in Santeria, it's a culture thing. It's the same demon operating entrapment, set up, engaging, killing, steal, and destroy. And for the, for the only purpose they do this. Is to keep you away from the cross and your purpose and your destiny to know Jesus Christ. And, and I end with this. And I say this to the believers out there that are listening under the sound of my voice. It's time to repent. It's time to make right with God. Don't play with a holy God. The Bible makes it clear. The Bible makes it clear that Jesus said in his word, be afraid of me that I can destroy your body and your soul. People, I went to hell. I don't know how long I was there. That's how I got saved. I tell you right now, I, I, I could have been there for a half hour. I could have been there for 20 minutes. I can't even give you the time that I was down there. But I did win. And one thing, just that 20 minutes, half hour, they, they just say I was there for 20 minutes and a half hour. That was enough to tell me to turn from my wicked ways, to turn from, from 25 years of devil worshiping. I turned because just a glimpse of what that was, whether it's 20 minutes or, or, 20 minutes or 25 minutes, the time I was there was enough for me to say yes to Jesus and no to the devil. So imagine to be in hell for eternity. There's people that today, that died today, and they started their first day in hell. Don't let the entrapment and the lies and the deception, there's something that looks cool, that looks good, that looks harmless, send you to a place that you'll spend your eternity and never to return and never to even say nothing because you are separated from a holy God. You're separated from a place that God has predestined for you to live with him for an eternity. And my message today, Brother Shannon, is I will say, like Ezekiel say in, 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 in chapter 33, the train is coming and you're sitting on the tracks. And I say to you, get off the tracks. The train is coming. The watchman on the wall. And that's what I'm talking about. So your blood today is off my hands because I told you what Halloween is about. Now, if you want to celebrate it, that's up to you. If you want to do harvest in your church, that's up to you. But I sounded the trumpet, and I'm telling you today, whoever celebrates Halloween is cursed beyond you can imagine. I leave you with this. It's time to repent. It's time to turn to Jesus Christ. Amen. Turn it over to you, Shannon. Amen. Good word tonight, brother.